going through the same thing with Zix, as Zix is swapping to the warrior role. Mm -hmm. um, and he's been playing that for like three weeks now, and is still just trying to, you know, wrap his head around it. So, role swapping's not easy. And we'll have to see if Cattle's adjusting. But we have the draft started, Gilly. Okay. Game number one's going to be here on Towers of Doom. OVO Gaming going to be with the first pick, first ban. And I just realized that I don't have a piece of paper to write this down, but I will remedy that for the next game. And a first ban on Illidan. Usually we see that being left to the second pick, but really not wanting to even have the chance of having to deal with that. Rack Attack will ban Kale Foss. Uh, Sony going to be the first pick here for OBO Gaming. Not a pick that we get to see too often at a high uh, priority anymore. Even in Korea, Sonya first pick has fallen off uh, pretty heavily. But I like it on this map. It's a lot of aggression. Um, one of the better melee assassins. Um, you know, the heroes like Sylvanas and Zul are not necessarily bad on this map, but they're less prioritized because you know you're not sieging for a core anymore. You're sieging for you know a bell tower. Right. And with that, too, Ovio are really controlling that melee assassin role with the ban on Illidan 2 and picking up Sonya. We'll see if Rack Attack wants to get Thrall here, but they are going to grab Muradin. Now, Muradin has been quite changed in the last patch. Have you had a chance to play him very much with this newest patch? Yeah, I mean, as long as Muradin's kit is still his kit, where he's got the mobility and the cooldowns are the same, he will always see play. His kit just... It, it, rewards aggression, it rewards defensive play, he's just as well-rounded as you can get. Um, so as long as, you know, his numbers don't take too much of a hit, mm -hmm. he'll be fine. Uh, you know, the stun duration nerf definitely does hurt him, but... Uh, it hurt a lot of people, though. Yeah, it hurt. It was a, kind of a nerf across the board, so... Right. And then they'll add Li Ming to that, too. And OVO Gaming are now looking at getting Rhaegar... And we'll have one more. We'll see if they want to go for like an early ETC, if they don't want to be banned out of having a strong warrior to go along with the Sonya, or if they care more about um, trying to get some more damage on the board here. Maybe the Tassadar too. Yeah, Tassadar is an option. Um, great vision for this map, good stalling, decent in lane. Mm -hmm. um, so Tassadar could be a good pickup here. There's also still a lot of good damage dealers up, but they are going to go with the Tass. Um, which in a lot of people, they're starting to feel that Tassadar might be like the new first pick, first ban. We're seeing Tassadar in a lot of games. I think Europe's the only region that's not super prioritizing Tassadar right now. Yeah, I think I saw him in a first pick a couple of times position in the Super League. Yeah. Earlier this week. And plus, I mean, he's always been paired with Sonya um, for a long time because of the fact that he enables Sonya to keep brawling and the other heroes to keep brawling if that's what they're wanting to do in their compositions. The Rack Attack are going to punish OVO for not getting an ETC here. They already picked up their Muradin, so they show that they might want to do this, banning out the ETC. Now OVO are going to potentially respond, there it is, with banning out Tronda. I like the Tronda ban. Uh, Muradin, Tronda is still a fantastic combo. Um, great utility as well for the comp. And then, of course, the stalls that you get on this map. Toronto right. is really, really good. Rack Attack with their next two pick. They still have a lot of options on the table. I mean, wouldn't be too surprised if we saw the Uther ban. Um, but we are starting to see a rise of Malfury in a bit. Don't think it's the best in this situation, but throughout the day, keep your eyes out for that mouth as other regions are starting to float towards them a little bit more. As people are starting to learn to play around it better. Damage dealers, you got Sylvanas up, Vala up. Good range poke is always good, as well as Zeratul. Zeratul would be a great pickup uh, just in general on this map, mm -hmm. uh, even against the Tassadar. But NA doesn't really run Tassadar Zeratul that much. It's really only Cloud9 that's been picking Zeratul recently. I thought maybe they would with Zeratul Brightwing. Um, it's a very easy way to find yourself up against two people where you thought you were completely alone. But we'll have to see if that's something that they want to do. They're going to grab the Brightwing here, and it's an interesting choice given that Tassadar is already gone and Toronto is too. Usually we see Brightwing in that double support position. And well, Zagara, Zagara too. Definitely an interesting pickup here. Another hero with good stall, good vision. Um, Brightwing pickup is really interesting for me. Um, the no pseudo support with it is going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah. Um, they're de they, they're probably picking a melee assassin with this, whether it's Thrall, whether it's Zeratul. If you had Thrall to this mix, they've got a really good lane phase. Yeah. 
They do. They have a, a lot of opportunities to keep someone out if they want to run around. Um, Zagara, I'm going to be interested to see how she does. She had a change on her battle momentum. It is now swarm momentum, and as with all the other battle momentums, it was removed her ability to reduce the cooldown of her heroic ability, but it did increase the cooldown reduction for her other abilities. So we'll see how that will factor into things for Zagara. It will be a long time between those devouring mods for sure. A new Braxonia is a terrifying combo. Um, you can run solo warrior and new Brack when it's with someone like a Sonya pretty easily. I feel like you can run solo a new, a new Barak even without the Sonya there. But whenever you have the double front line, a new Barak Sonya is a lot of aggression. They've got a lot of healing between Rhaegar and Tassadar. Um, really good brawling composition, but we've seen that brawling composition sometimes don't work the best on this map. And there's going to be the Vala as that last pick for damage. I think I might have liked the Sylvanas just a little bit better. But overall, I really like the comp, uh, the comp from uh, OVO Gaming. Why would you like the Sylv Sylvanas there? Wailing Arrow is just great versus Brightwing. Um, she's but more damage as well. Just she can solo bell towers. So Vala's just a better pick in general than Vala most of the time. Especially whenever you're only against one front line right now. Vala's mm -hmm. really good against multiple front lines when you get the uh, new executioner style. And right now it's really just the Muradin. Uh, I think Sylvanas probably would. I mean, it's not necessarily that Vala's a bad pick. I just like Sylva a little bit more there. Well, there is the Zara tool that you had predicted earlier on. So there is going to be our composition from both teams as we get ready for this first game on Towers of Doom. <laughs> uh, we will be starting pretty quickly, guys. Hopping back over to cams for now. Do you have a favorite between those two compositions that got picked up? Yeah, I like OVOs a little bit more. I love the new Brax Sonya right now. I think it's a really good double warrior comp. Um, and, you know, I've I'm, I'm never been a fan of solo support Brightwing. Yeah. Not just saying that Rack Attack got bodied in the draft. Um, and nor am I predicting who's going to win this game. But if I were to just look at the draft, I really like OVO Gamings. A noob Sonya is really fun. Yeah, I think a lot of it will come down to what Rack Attack can get done with the Zara tool, the Void Prisons, as well as what kind of picks they can get. Wilted saying happy birthday to you in the chat. Don't know if you got a chance to see that, but I wanted to let you know <laughs> that he wanted to wish you that happy birthday. But guys, we are ready for game number one between OVO, Team OVO, and Rack Attack. Rack Attack. Spam your rack attacks in the chat, boys. <laughs> Make Stark's life miserable. He is so thankful that you said that. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. There's another stream going on, by the way. You can go check out Jay House stream. I believe he's casting with Baba Booey. Mm-hmm. And they're ca he's casting uh, Hot Dog Burglars versus Team Blaze. Two teams at the end of today will qualify the winner of the winner's bracket match finals and then the winner of the loser's finals. But here we go, guys. In the blue is Rack Attack with Zugrug playing Zagara, Deadly Ice on Zeratul, Dainsky playing Lee Ming Handlebars on Muradin, and Panda Grape will be playing Brightwing. And on the right-hand side of the map, it's going to be OVO Gaming in the red, or Team OVO, excuse me, in the red chunks. we got Wang Sing on Tassadar, Gelato on Vala, Theoclis on Anubarak, Talas playing Sonya, and Wilted playing Rhaegar. Gilly, am I obsing for you? Yeah, are you cool with it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dog. I'm <laughs> okay. cool with it. You are the better obs, so I'd prefer that. Oh, oh. look at that. Phase shift art, so pretty. I love it. Looking at these talents at level 1, we do have Damp and Magic, which was recently added to a new Barak. He's the first person besides Stitches to get it, right? I'm pretty sure. I think so. Unless you count, like, I mean, if you mean that exact talent. Yeah, not first or, lock. There are, yeah, like, Lee Ming's got her version of it and right. stuff. We'll see how this is going to go. Deadly Ice is trying to zone out Wing Sing as much as he can here in the top to just mitigate the amount of experience they get. And we'll have to see how this game is going to play out. Um, there's a lot of aggression on the end of OVO. 
a new Barak, Sonya. If they catch anyone out of position, that target is going to die. Yeah, that's where we see them really trying to rotate around. Zugrug just staying on his mount to make sure that he can stay back and not get caught by that as the rotation will come down there. And they have to know that OVO is going to be going for that rotation style with the rest of them. Um, the other side can just kind of stay in lane with that right wing too. But we're going to get into a fight. Handlebars uh, getting Whoa. caught by a lot of the stuns from OVO, but Dwarf tosses away. Yakos does go over the wall. I thought I thought the team was going to commit more to that kill, but uh, they did end up backing out. You know, just doing some light damage to Murden, going to force them to tap well. Same time, uh, Wang Sang doing a great job versus Panda Grape in the top. And that wall's going to start taking some damage. And we're going to have that first triple strip on uh, very soon here, Gilly. And we'll see who is willing to get aggressive with their contentions. Uh, you could see that uh, OVO contest the bottom one while Tassar stalls out top. He's really good mm -hmm. at just kind of poking away. Yeah, but we do have people who have some really good global presence. So we may, we may see them just trying to fight while keeping people in the lane. Um, slowly zoning so they can try to get control uh, extra in the experience fight. But both teams are picking up their level 4 talents now. And with Murid and Aleeming in front, we're seeing uh, Rack Attack also try to be aggressive with these top ones. Maybe just giving up the bottom ones and safely poking where they can as Zugrug drops an infested drop to slow down. Looks like Dunsky is going to try and get the cap here. Does get stalled out by Wang saying Wilted is in here to help stall it out. And uh, neither team has gotten, uh, or excuse me, only one has been capped so far. It was the left one picked up by Rack Attack. Oh, Polymorph wow. goes down. A lot of pressure the Gelato, and he gets taken out first blood very easily. That's the power of this Brightwing Zeratul, is you never know when all of a sudden Zeratul is going to show up alone. But when you've got the phase shift coming in too, instantly 2v1, where you thought that you were completely safe. And so they're able to take down Vala, and they got two out of the three of the altars. A great job by Rack Attack in that first phase. About a half level lead right now here for Rack Attack. We'll see uh, how they plan on pushing this lead even further. Good job with the kills. Deadly Ice uh, trying to trade with Talaz here. Not something you can do as Zeratul. Have to be more careful of that. And the first camp being started here by OVO. I like the rotations that they're doing. They've, they've been very aggressive between mid and bottom. Yeah, they've been continually been trying to find people, but may uh, pay for it there, taking some damage from the Oculus and checking on those pumpkin sappers on the left-hand side of the battleground. Still, we have Tassadar and the Brightwing in the top lane, but we'll see how much OVO can get done with these pumpkins. A really good response from Rack Attack to try to push them back so they can deal with these before they get close to the towers. Level 7 almost picked up here by both of these teams. The Oculus uh, catching a rotation here from Dansky and Deadly Ice, just trying to slow that down. We'll see uh, how these teams are going to contest, contest this next shrine phase. Um, this is a good situation for OVO in the top as Tassadar is doing some good siege damage up here. Um, this will allow uh, them to either push it down easier later on or get a Merc camp here. Uh, Deadly Ice is actually going for uh, a potential gank there. It's hard to gank the, Zer or the Tassadar though, even if you do get the Brightwing uh, teleport in and the Polymorph. Now an Alter phase is about to start. Brightwing could stay up here at the top, only phase shifting if she's needed, and but well, that's it's down not... right now. She just used it. Oh, okay. So yeah, she's just going to uh, come in then, not wanting to make or wanting to make sure that she is there, especially being the only support for the team. But that means Tassadar is going to be left up top, and that lane was already pushed in really well for OVO. Level seven here for both teams, so they are on even point, and we'll see. Uh, how these teams want to go at contesting this. Hanabar's taking some light poke. Zeratul's still looking for a flank on Tassadar in mid. And uh, we see that the most of the soak is still being maintained here by Rack Attack. The Oculus looking for a way to engage for his team, but uh, they're playing very, very safe. And it's hard for them to get like a really hard engage unless either The Oculus goes in or until they get 13 where Gelato can catch people with frost shots. Yeah, and Dansky from the side doing a job of poking the members, but this is a double support composition for OVO, so they're being able to be just fine in healing up from that. And they look like they're wanting to try to get into that fight, but this Ancient Spear misses and a good polymorph on Talaz. Handlebar's still kind of far away from the team and taking some damage as you're going to see Panda Grape giving that phase shield to Deadly Ice, but OVO have pushed away Rack Attack. Yeah, and they get the cap, so now the score is evened up 32 to 32. Is that Ancient Spear range? Yeah, I was just looking at that too. Huh. I didn't even know that was a talent anymore. 
<laughs> yeah, there's two ancient spear ones at that level. There's the poisoned one and the composite spear. But yeah, not definitely not something we see there. It's almost always a ferocious healing. Yeah, a lot of but, damage in this top lane uh, because of that bright wing. Um, just really struggling versus the Tassar. What were you gonna say? I was just gonna say we'll see how Sonya can deal with that, not having the ferocious healing. That's something that's up pretty often. So to go away from that must be very comfortable and confident with that double support style that they do have. Because even when you do see dual support with Sonya, you'll still see them go for ferocious healing. Yeah, Ferocious Healing is really good, um, but even then we see Poison Spirit most of the time outside of Ferocious Healing, so it's really right. interesting to see the range here, just a little bit of extra mobility. Um, since they are running, essentially, a lot of people consider Zerath a little more of a ranged uh, uh, in the play style, you know, they, these guys are going to be poking from a distance, maybe that extra spear range will help them keep up with the Anubarak. Right. Yeah, we shall see. Um, OVO has done a really good job of keeping their lanes pushed, right? Up in the top, they've taken down those towers. The bottom one, we saw them get some value from the Pumpkin Sappers. And that's given them a little bit of an experience advantage, but Rack Attack is keeping right along with them and also has their heroic abilities. And we're seeing them start to get picked up. It'll be Locust Swarm instead of Cocoon for a new Barak. This is something that you and I saw last week when Zhao Ti played a new Barak, too. Yeah, it's a lot of damage. Uh, allows you to just kind of go in and brawl more. Um, I find it interesting that that's the style they're wanting to play versus this comp. Again, it's you know it's essentially four ranged here, uh, with only Murden being the one that's going to be truly brawling. So they're going to have to really catch people out of position uh, for them to get value out of the uh, Locust Storm very easily. Here we do have a duo altar spawn here in the bottom side of the map. At the same time, we have Deadly Ice and Panda Grape capping this uh, top um, camp. And we'll see uh, who's going to be able to win this as uh, yeah, they're far away. Down, but Zertel has to walk all the way. Right, and Li Ming really isn't even in position either. We're seeing Zagar in the bottom, and she can stall pretty well. But Handlebars, he's going to struggle with that mid area. Li Ming and Zeratul starting to get to that mid altar. But Sonia is right on top of the bottom one, as is the Rhaegar too, starting to channel it out. They've stopped Wingsing in the mid. They've taken so much damage, that strafe! Yeah, good zoning from Giletto. Love them to cap that bottom one, uh, just forcing everyone back. And that's the problem with this composition for uh, Rack Attack, is the only hard engage they have is the Zeratul Brightwing. We do see that Zagara goes down at the same time. Wangsen getting low behind. Nice kill on the Brightwing as well. And uh, he's going to be able to survive here. Blink was used here, so if he can get catch. Force Wall, not the best one uh, for securing that kill. He does wormhole back in. That's a oh. full man but there's no one here to follow up. If the Maw was outside of this, maybe they could have gotten some value. But uh, a waste of VP there, and that's going to be both Shrines going over to OVO. Yeah, I think maybe he was trying to VP the other three so he could finally get the kill on Tassadar. He was going hard to get that Tassadar, but still got, caught, got him caught in the VP too. And he knew that it was over after that, just started to run away. And that is both of the altars hitting Rack Attack's core and OVO pulling ahead in the core health quite a bit, even stealing away these pumpkin sappers too. So this is going to start to do some damage to that bell tower in bottom. Let's see if they can take it out there. Um, it is, they're just going to go ahead and back out. It's hard to siege into a Zart or Zagara Leeming. So uh, not getting too aggressive here. Going to start their own camp. Deadly Ass might scout this out. Um, same time, again, let's take a look at that top lane here. Front wall was completely devoured uh, by OVO, so they've been doing a fantastic job uh, as well, but the uh, camp that they capped before, which saw the rotation, uh, did take out part of that front wall, so they're trying to even this up, and they're staying even on experience, but yeah, uh, they are just doing finding really well, uh, it hard to get the engages they want. Well, then both teams are about to get those 13 talents. And that will help out a lot with the Zeratul too. He can get more aggressive with his wormhole. And uh, more damage for Zagar once he can pick up the Mutalisk. We'll see if Li Ming is feeling comfortable enough to go with the glass cannon. You know, this uh, brawler style. If she gets caught out by that Ancient Spear, especially with the range increase, it could spell trouble. But there go the Pumpkin Sappers. And that Bell Tower is getting pretty dangerously low. Yeah, and this would be a really good time if they could get that, as uh, the next altars will be spawning soon. In the top lane, saying again, just able to bully Panda Grape uh, very easily here as Tassadar just keeps pushing in and pushing in, and eventually, if this lane phase up there keeps going uncontested by Deadly Ice, they'll be able to do some serious damage to that fort. Brightwing teleports in, uh, it will be a duo spawn here, again, at the top, and we'll see uh, if OVO can contest both of them again. Yeah, so in the last one we saw a pretty late rotation from them, and we are not seeing that this time as all of the members are starting to head up to. Brightwing is just going to clear out that, uh, that wave push 
to give them a little more experience and make sure that no damage starts getting put on that bell tower. And for now, they are still even in the bell tower, so this is good for them. The brawl is going to happen in the mid, and right now, the way it's looking is that they're going to just trade out. But even the Headless Horseman's getting involved, and boom, a Nubarak just gets destroyed. They're actually trying to stall this out as well. Looks like Rectech might be able to even this up here. Jodo going to avoid the orb there. First cap was picked up by Brightwing. Uh, we'll see if OVO can stall this out with basically Tassar Vala. Panda Grape and uh, the Brightwing does teleport in. Gelato gets underneath his bell tower. He will be fine there at the same time. Handlebar's diving deep for Talaz. There goes the Ancestral Healing Wingsick. Does get a good force wall down, but Dwarf Toss has been used. Mob missing everyone. It does. It kind of zones out at least Talaz, and this might be it for Panda Grape. The Hungry Arrow, is it going to hit? Oh, it does not. So a double pickup by Rack Attack, and you're right. They have evened out the core health. A very close game between both of these teams. Yeah, you, you can't play the dance floor with the composition OVO ha has, and that's what they were doing. They did not know if they wanted to hard engage or not, and that's what led to Anubarak's death. Also, of course, not using the Ancestral and just kind of letting him die. Uh, but you need to go into the fight wanting to either just hard engage or, you know, try and... You have to... If, if you're going to go for what they did there, you need to be the first one there to zone them off, like they did with the bottom shrine. They were there first. They were able to aggressively zone because of that. But unless you're... Ooh. Wow, Dansky getting annihilated. Zogrog might go down here too. Nice burst, but uh, he will get behind the wall just in time. Whew, okay, so we've got another, uh, well, I guess the tunnels are now available. I thought we heard, I heard an altar phase. But the experience is starting to get further and further ahead for Rack Attack. So if they can get those 16 talents, unfortunately for them, they're about to lose a bell tower in the bottom with the pumpkins finally bringing that down. So if they, that's something immediately they'll have to deal with. And with Brightwing up there in the top, she could become a target for the rotations from OVO. But for now, they're going after the mid, trying to bring down the towers there and continue to get more experience. Yeah, and even though right now they're getting no value out of the bell tower, getting a one bell tower just kind of sets the momentum in your favor for the rest of the game. Yeah. If they play this right, they're able to just kind of contest multiple bell towers. What they should be doing is sieging top, not doing these merc camps. When you get one bell tower, what you want to do is just set like an infinite trade situation where they go and reclaim bottom while you take top. Uh, and unfortunately, that's not what they're doing. They just kind of let Rack Attack get a bell tower back for free, essentially. Yeah, it's like they rotated to the mid, but since it saw the towers and gate there, it slowed down from being able to do that. But now we've got the fifth altar phase. It's a good thing that Rack Attack was able to get that bell tower back before this phase, and we'll see how they're able to split up. Again, with that global presence, we have Brightwing up at the top. Zagara, who has been in the bottom basically this whole time, trying to get that versus the Tassadar. But the first one is going to be channeled on the top right by OVO. Yep, we'll see uh, that the spear does connect, and that range actually helps them get that intro there, but Tlaz getting blown up, is also going to get in range for the Ancestral, getting very low, and they do use it, Deadly Eyes getting very low, Brightwing teleports onto him, Yuckless and Tlaz looking it for it, they do get the spear, it does not connect with anyone, but they get him much closer, and BP was used, no real follow-up yet, there goes the Lee Ming burst, and they does get avoided by Theoclos, at the same time, Wang saying versus Zugrug in the bottom. He's doing a good job of stalling it out, but he will lose this eventually. It looks like it's going to be a hard collapse from OVO, so they give up the top one, let uh, Dansky cap that one, but they're going to get a kill here onto Zugrug potentially. Brightwing is teleporting in. Nice stun from Handlebars, and the Mock is just two people. Beautiful defense so far from Z Rack Attack. Oh, and there goes the follow-up damage, but the strafe in the back. Gelato is pushing away Zugrug, who was already pretty low. Here comes the Disintegrate 2, and Talos just gets melted. There's no Ancestral this time to help keep them alive. And with that uh, resets, they're able to kill Sonya and Vala. And although this started out looking pretty difficult for Rack Attack, they're going to be the ones who grab two of the three altars. Yep, good job there from Rack Attack. Um, great uh, pacing, great patience from this team. Um, and that they're able to secure that. Uh, a bit of an interesting decision making on the late game from OVO is they've given up a lot of free opportunities for kills. The, you know, they seem yeah. to have multiple people on different uh, pages here, you know, and then engage in the top where Sonya and Uberak went in. Rhaegar was kind of behind a wall, not with them. You know, they, they, they didn't have neither uh, the Tascar uh, nor the Vala with them when they were doing that as well, you know, as that engage happened. Maybe that would have been different up there. Uh, so the OVO kind of needs to just kind of get their bearings in this game and try and you know, group up and start doing things as a team and not, you know, be split constantly. You know, I really thought that they were going to be able to get that top left altar too, because everyone from OVO or Rack Attack who was up there were super low and they had to kind of back off for a bit and heal back up. It was really just Lee Ming, but after that Void Prison there, I think they were just like, well, we'll rotate down. Tassadar has kept Zagara from eating this. We'll get the kill on Zagara and then we'll be able to 
you know, pick up this altar, and so it's still two out of the three, but the rotation from Rack Attack was in perfect time to be able to stop that from happening, and Zugrug's, the, the uh, Devouring Maw was really big too. We see a good push here uh, from OVO here. We'll see if they can cap this point. Again, hopefully in this next time they don't just give it up for free after they do take it, if they do take it. All three pumpkins do end up connecting it with it, but they're, they're being very patient with their siege. This is a five versus three. They know Brightwing and Xerxel were well revealed mid, yet they still did not want to hard engage underneath that bell tower. I find that very, very interesting. Um, with both the minion wave there initially, as well as the Nubrax Beetles, I feel like they could have uh, uh, dove that five versus three and potentially gotten a kill and the bell tower. But again, just really uh, passive play coming out from OVO despite this very aggressive brawler composition. Brightwing's about to get the top bell tower too. She is just sitting there working on it completely for free. Oculus is going to hit a couple of members with the Impale. But the fight is happening and Brightwing has phase shifted in, so now finally they've nearly been able to get their own bell tower and we'll see how this fight can go down, whether they might be able to rotate back up and get that Locust Swarm starting to be used by the Oculus as Talas is going for the channel, but with that Arcane Garage talent pickup for Brightwing, it's pretty easy for her to be able to stop it. There's the Devouring Maw and the, the uh, Void Prison. Like I said, gets taken out immediately. Theoklos goes for the burrow onto Dansky, but he's going to fall. Talaz getting very low. Actually, spears back into the fight, and he is going to go down. Dansky looking for the resets. Uh, has to be careful that his combo doesn't get wasted on Beatles, and he does wait patiently, but Theoklos is just barely going to live. And again, really interesting decision-making coming out from uh, OVO. Um, I feel like Ancestral was uh, not necessarily wasted on Vala. It saved her, but you don't want to be using Ancestral healing on Vala when you have an Anubarak and a Sonya. You right. want to be using that on your Brawler. So that made Sonya and Anub a little bit more in a tense situation. This is going to get uh, Rack Attack level uh, 20 here. They got a two level lead now. They got a Bell Tower. Looks like Murden's trying to get top. He is actually going to get top. That's Suddenly, huge. Two level lead with two Bell Towers in, uh, extra in your favor. That is a big lead. Sorry guys, I didn't get the talents down in the in time for the last one, but yeah, they're even going to siege up here in the middle too, forcing Team OVO in such a difficult position. They're just starting to all get back up after the last fight, and what are they going to do? They're going to try to defend here. They don't have level 20. They're still going to try to get the fight since they're underneath that, but bang, one more arcane flare, and all of a sudden, every single bell tower on the map is controlled by Rack Attack. Yeah, now it's going to be Siege until they can cap one. They're going to bottom, but it looks like they're trying to zone this out. I love this contention here. They don't have Ling Ming with it, but they know they can kind of just contest this. There's another situation where I'm curious as to, uh, you know, if OVO uh, can win a fight here. This is five versus four. They do get the bell tower. Are they willing to contest? Plaza's looking for the chase. Nice storm bolt to disengage out and wilt it, and they're going to go ahead and back out of there. So they did take a few shots there, but... Uh, this is a massive, massive lead here uh, for Rack Attack. They're going to go ahead and get these pumpkins um, as OVO is reclaiming that middle one. And uh, we'll probably see them reclaim this bottom one. All right, so there is an altar about to spawn in 20 seconds. Team OVO does not have 20 and won't have it at the time that it starts. And with Rack Attack claiming this, they're going to force Team OVO to, again, make a really tough decision because if they don't go and try to contest this altar, they're going to get hit by six shots by, uh, by Rack Attack, and that would nearly be game over for them as they only have eight core health left. Ooh, Deadly Eyes uh, teleporting Brightwing into an awkward spot, but they do end up blink healing and uh, blinking out. Four man oh, ball, wow. but Dansky just used his combo. Let's see if they have enough to clean it up there. They get double kill almost instantly. Oh, the resets God. for Dansky are uh, oh. going to be able to completely wipe OVO, and uh, that should be game, Gilly. Yeah, that was nuts. They can go after that. They can either try to pick up this bell tower and get the final two shots that way, or they can just go after the boss too, which is look looks like that is going to be what they try to do. They've already rotated up to go for this. And this is it. Team Ovio realizes that they have to just throw themselves at the boss, but it is a Tassadar. And he just gets polymorphed as he walks in. And that'll be it. GG. Game number one goes to Rack Attack. Yeah, I, I feel like, uh, I mean, I really liked Ovio's comp. I just feel like they played it very poorly. Uh, they played it like you would a poke comp, which is what Rack Attack has. This is a death ball brawly style composition that you would see like a team like MVP Black Run where you just kind of dive all over your enemies and you kill them over and over and over and that's how you win the game is just through kills and they just seem very scared. They never really hard engaged. They always just kind of sat in these poke wars, used Ancestral before the fight actually started and then they would try and hard engage. Uh, it just came down to uh, I guess maybe a lack of practice with this kind of play style. Well, that means that Rack Attack are up 1-0 in this best of three. 
Winner of this will go on to face the winner of Cloud9 and... Uh, I forget who they were playing. Let me look at the bracket really fast. Psy Storm. Brawls Deep? No, that's Tempo Storm. Cloud9's playing Psy Storm, I believe. Oh, I think I, maybe I have the wrong... Psy Storm isn't in this. Okay, well then the doc that Zach made me look at is wrong then. I'm looking I'm at Liquipedia, but maybe Liquipedia can definitely be wrong. So I'm, I'm looking at the caster doc we are given. I okay. can go to the actual bracket itself. Oh no, Memento. Yeah, I'm pulling that up too. That is qualifier three. It, Give us it, a sec, dudes. We'll be there. Tempo Storm's playing Brawls Deep. Cloud Mind's okay. playing Psy Store Gaming. All right, so that is that bracket in the chat is wrong. Uh, so we will get that changed. We're going to take a quick break while I get that changed, and then we'll be back for game number two. See you guys soon. All right, guys, we are back and ready for game number two between Rack Attack and OVO. What's going to be on Infernal Shrines? And it looks like the teams switched sides just to spite me. I think you might be muted. Yep. <laughs> Hello. Hi. There we go. So Rack Attack is up 1-0. Oh, just getting the overlays ready. And the draft will start pretty soon. But guys, tweet. Let us know how excited you are for these games. Who do you think is going to qualify? Use the hashtag HGC. You can tweet at me at GillyweedSC2 and Zoya at TempoZoya. We want to hear from you. Especially while we wait for this next draft. What are you drinking? Water. Okay. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> It sounded like a juice box or something. I wish I had a juice box. That'd be <laughs> dope. Juice boxes are the best. Oh my gosh. What's that? I don't have Giazzo on the new computer, but I would take a picture of the chat having 1337 viewers right now. <gasps> that is super elite. But I can't do that because I don't have Giazzo installed. That's alright, maybe someone else can do it. Guys, here we go. Game number two. The draft has started. Rack Attack banning Zul on Infernal Shrines. 
No surprise there. Zul can control so much with his ability to push through the lanes. OVO now, are they going to ban Illidan or will we see something different? They banned him last time. Yeah. I'd be surprised if they didn't. They're going to go with the Sylve. They don't want to let any of the pushers uh, through. Zul and Sylve both potentially getting banned here. Now we do see Illidan. Oh, kill Thoss instead. I think I like the Kel'th. If, if you're not going to ban Illidan, I like the Kel'thos ban more. I think guaranteeing yourself either Illidan or Sylv is fine. Again, I would prefer the Illidan ban, but if you're not going to do that, uh, banning the Kel'thos makes more sense to me. Now, a few times we've seen teams draft Sylvanas on this battleground, but then never win a single objective. So it's not like a... it's not an insta-win, right, if you pick up... Sylvanas, you have to be able to actually get the objective, get the Punisher, and then be able to push with her, but we'll see if that's who they want to grab here. Illidan is available, but Rack Attack did not take him. Instead, grabbing Tassadar and OVO want nothing to do with the Betrayer. They want Sonya. This is already weird to me. I know. <laughs> they have Tassadar, and you're going to give them Illidan. All right. We'll see how this goes for OBL. This is brave. They must be really feeling that uh, Rack Attack can't play um, Illidan that well or something. If you're willing to give like Rack Attack Rhaegar Illidan right now with Tassadar. Yeah, that so is... Illidan Brightwing. That's pretty terrifying. This is, this is a brave draft for sure. <laughs> I think it would be Deadly Ice playing the Illidan. Pretty sure. Do they want to do it though? Do they want to make sure that they have something else here? I don't know why they wouldn't in picking up the Tassadar. There's Uther. Seeing the Uther pick scares me. <laughs> so it probably that? means they're not running Illidan. Yeah, I'm tilted. <laughs> Right. That well, is they have three the... utility picks here for Rack Attack. They haven't picked a single de assassin yet, yeah. which is very peculiar uh, in the current meta. There are a lot of damages in the game, but there are only a handful of really good ones. And yeah, they're essentially just letting you know OVO ban out whatever they want damage-wise, yeah. which is not Illidan, which is again weird. But no kill Thos, so clearing out the shrines, they won't have him. Li Ming, not necessarily the greatest for that, but still no uh, ability to get resets upon resets with her. Um, no Zul, no Sonya, obviously, because Sonya and Sylvanas grabbed by OVO, so wh who do Rack attack at? Oh, okay, so they're going to switch and finally ban out the Illidan. And Rack Attack will ban Rhaegar, knowing that they have grabbed the Uther. So we'll see what OVO are going to support with. Maybe Brightwing Toronto? Yeah, just not the solo Brightwing again. There's the Murden. I think that's a fine pickup here. You do need a stun, an extra stun for the Mosh Pit. What about Malfurion in this instance? There's a lot of great places for entangling I, roots. I would save the support for after Rack Attack picks their damages. Okay. Just because you don't know what you're going to be up against. Yeah, that's true. Rainer's going to be the pickup leaning. here. I think they can make Rainer work. The problem is you have two heroes that don't scale until 16. As well as you don't have, right, right now at least. Um, OVO Gaming doesn't have the best procs for Executioner, and that's what makes Rainer so good in this patch late game. Right. All they have is the Murden stun and the Ancient Spear, which that's a very hard thing to time Executioner yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. They're slow from Thunderburn, too. Yeah. That helps. But they're two really late skilling heroes. Rainer and Sonya mm -hmm. don't start getting steam until 16. So they're going to have to uh, either play patiently or stall the map. Kerrigan picked up by Rack Attack. Um, she's got great support with Uther Tassadar. As for their last damage, Vala's up. 
Thrall available if they're okay with running two melee assassins. I feel like they do need a mage though. Maybe so false dad. Mean... Oh yeah, false dad. It looks like they're looking at false dad too. He'll be able to kind of do what we saw Brightwing do in the last game, fly in late to the fights. Also, they have got a lot of great um, zoning potential. They've got the mosh pit from ETC, and then Falstad can always mighty guess if they don't find a good engagement from OVO. And OVO are going to grab Karazim as their support. This is going to be interesting. This is a uh, two very interesting drafts based off how they played out. We've seen uh, the Kerrigan style work before on this map. It's the only map we actually see her on right now. Really yeah. good. Yeah, at the North American Regional, it was weird. She was banned more than she was picked, and it was solely because Infernal Shrines was played so much and she was banned on Infernal Shrines. Just letting the players know we're ready. What do you think about the drafts? I mean, I think Rag Attack wins the draft pretty easily. Yeah, they're my favorite team. I just have to ignore the fact that a team first picked Tassadar, Illidan didn't get banned, and they didn't go Illidan Rhaegar. <laughs> I, can, I can remove that aspect from my mind and we'll just pretend that Illidan was banned first round, then Rag Attack had a fantastic draft. OVO mm -hmm. Gaming's draft's not necessarily bad. Anytime you have Sylvanas on this map, it's a good situation, but it's just too late game. Rainer and Sonya probably going to have difficulties, especially versus the Kerrigan when it's only a Kerrigan keeping them up. I find myself wondering if they're going to divine Palm or Seven-Sided Strike. They have to go Palm versus the Kerrigan. They yeah, that's what I was thinking too, but if they find like ETC going in for a relief, like a too far of a mosh pit or Kerrigan too far forward, maybe they could Seven-Sided Strike? I don't know though. I feel like you have to go Palm for the Rainer, or Rainer is just free money for Kerrigan. Free money. <laughs> there we go, guys. Game number two. Rack Attack up 1 0. Win this, and they will face the victor of Cloud9 versus Psystorm Gaming. And I think I got them on the right side. Yes, they are on the right side. Nice. Eh? So Infernal Shrines, we'll be seeing who can control those Shrines. It'll really be up to Rag Attack to make sure that OVO doesn't get those. You know, take advantage of, like you talked about, them having more of a late game comp to try to win them early on so that they can snowball them. Because with the Sylvanas, you can come back pretty easily with just one of those Shrines if you, you know, find yourself in the right situation. But here we go, in the blue, with Team OVO. Theoculus on Muradin, Talas playing Sonia Wilted on Karazim, Giletto playing Rainer, and Wang Sang on Sylvanas. On the right hand side of the map, we have o, um, Rack Attack here in the red trunks. It's going to be Handlebars on ETC, Deadly Ice on Kerrigan, uh, Zugrug on Tassadar, Dansky playing the Falstead, and Pandagrape playing Uther. Isn't it great when they all stack up like that? Yeah. All right, we'll be seeing the new season marksman from Rainer, a.k.a. Laner. And <laughs> that just wow. further makes him, you know, more of a late game. No, hero, you know? I'm not letting that one slide. That was terrible. Laner? People say that all the time. I've... What do you mean people say that all the time? That? You never see Rainer. People don't say that all the time. <laughs> He's never picked. That's a, it's like a Hero League joke, Laner. I apologize. It, it's, it's okay for now. <laughs> well, you see that the contention here is in the middle. Deadly Eyes can be looking for that combo. It will be Mage build uh, picked up from Falstead there. Nice Oof. power slide onto Rainer there, and that's what I'm talking about. He is just free money for this combo. I don't even know. Did Deadly Ice even use his combo there? Also, was the power slide. Yeah, that Might was have a, a combo up for Talad. There's a combo. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, even without the combo, just the power slide alone was just enough to kill the Rainer off there. So it definitely has to be Palm this game. Man, I am not sure why... Oh, the Rainer pickup here, as uh, he does become more viable in this patch, as uh, Dunsky is going to go... Is that Dansky or Dunsky? I think it's Dansky. Dansky, okay. 
Uh, saw them so aggressive in that lane, but now they're starting to spread out in their lanes and we're seeing how it's going to be set up. Sonia versus Tassadar in the top. In the bottom, Sylvanas is going to be there, but they do always have to be cautious because they know that the rotations, they're going to be controlled by rack attack unless they can catch somebody out like they're doing here. So let's talk a little bit about the Raynor pickup here as uh, he does become more viable in this patch as uh, Dunsky is going to go. Is that Dansky or Dunsky? I think it's Dansky. Dansky, okay. Um, Rainer, uh, with the new season marksman, gets berserk whenever he gets the, uh, the the quest finished. It is uh, 400 points, I believe, needed to do so. And mm -hmm. then you mix that with the new executioner at 16, and Rainer can essentially 1v5 people if he has both of those up at the same time. His damage is actually insane. Uh, the problem is Rainer still suffers from everything else Rainer did in the last patch, where he's very late game and he's very easy to kill. So Yeah, no escapability for him. Yeah, it, it's tough to make Rainer work without having, you know, like an Uther on your side. We'll see if the Karazine is going to be enough to support him. There goes the power slide onto Sonya there. Deadly Ice does dive in. Handlebar's taking a lot of damage. Good body blocking so far. Talaz is still alive, though. Great heals coming out from Karazine as well from the Whirlwind Spin. Zugrug looking for a flank. It's a big storm, and Talaz has to back out. Uh, Lightning Rod did a lot to Talaz, but Deadly Ice is similarly low. But the thing is here, there is the double support for Rack Attack, so they can get healed up much faster with those that shielding that Tassadar has. Everyone, both sides, using their well taps to get back into this. And the Skeletal Defenders, the, the counts for those on each side are very, very close. So it could be anyone's game here, but with Rack Attack not wanting to give that to Sylvanas, they're the ones who are getting right on top of the point and trying to control the positioning of both teams. And a great very far forward trying to zone out, and it will end up going over to uh, rack attack here. They're gonna have a Punisher on top of them. Will the leap go down? There oh, is the wow. Kerrigan pull there. Talaz getting very low, and he is going to fall two kills in favor of rack attack right now. And they are just controlling the early game to no surprise. Yeah, now the bait will happen, and a good haunting wave makes sure that she doesn't even get stunned from this. And with the bait, they're pulling in behind the fort so they can very easily uh, start to bring this down. They've got nice two ranged heroes here to deal with this while continuing their split lane soak in the other lanes with Karzim in the mid and Murden up top. And they take it out. They do lose the towers and the gate, but still um, a, a good defense here from Team OVO for sure. Level 6 to level 5 here. Rack Attack doing a great job of so far of just controlling the pacing of this game. Um, not getting too much value early on, but uh, that's just kind of how... Oh, wow. Well, there goes Rainer. <laughs> oh, man. They just have to watch out for the rotations. You're going to get caught by a Kerrigan and ETC anywhere if you're running around by yourself like that. Just take the safe way. Take a breath. Realize you're going for the late game. Don't get too much. You know they we, they showed that they already have the capacity to bring down a Punisher very quickly if they lose it. But now they're gonna lose Sylvanas. Yeah, I mean you have to respect the uh, the EDC Kerrigan. I mean yeah. it's just it's you, you can't be caught out of position. You have to stay mounted. You have to hug your walls, and you have to be ready to run away. You, 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 there should be no excuse to be getting hit by a power slide right now. Even the Oculus has to be careful versus this combo. Right. And still Sonya and Tassadar continuing up in the top, but with those kills, Rack Attack have a full level advantage. They've picked up their level 7 talents. They've got a lot more sustainability with the Kala's Embrace, too. And, of course, getting a cleanse for the Uther. That'll help out with them, too. Continuing on with the uh, the Spellcaster, the Mage Falstad with Boomerang. And OBR coming in, though. They've got their 7 talents. They really want to try to contest this. This is a brave invade here. Theoclus sitting on to the point. Deadly Ice might end up giving this up. They're actually going to rotate back towards them and starting to work on Theoclus. Hannibar's getting poked very low, gets hit by the Stormbolt. Is going to go ahead and back out Theoclus with the Dwarf Toss. That point's going to go over to Deadly Ice. And yeah, that was a really awkward engage there from OBO. Um, you know, they just kind of just traded damage and they didn't end up getting into camp. Well, this camp is going to be fairly valuable too since the Shrine is about to activate. So Team OVO may have to be late to the party or allow those to throw some damage, those spears onto the mid towers. Looks like they don't want to give up the shrine, so they're already starting to rotate up there. And uh, they are going to fully get here slightly before OVO, so they will have a bit of a setup for Rack Attack as they start to move in. You see that uh, 
Rack Attack going to be getting a head start on these minions here, doing a good job of zoning. Well, keep in mind, guys, you know, that Rack Attack is controlling the early game. OVO, you know, once they hit 16, they have a monstrous composition. They just need to be playing more safe, going for these Tracer. Actually, Kerrigan Combat does not end up connecting. Good engage on the Deadly Ice is getting very low, but good support coming out from Zugruk as well as Pandagrape, and they keep him alive. And now Talos very far forward. Good shields going on the Pandagrape, but he's going to be the first to fall. This is a dead Uther, though. He's going to be able to heal up his team. Nice combo goes oh down, gosh. and they get the kill on the Theoclus and the Sylvanas. Got to respect the Uther Ghost. Yeah, exactly. The fact that he can continue to heal them back up, it even becomes easier because the, that cooldown is up uh, far less often. But now he is gone. The power slide hits between Talos and Handlebars should be able to pick up the kill on ta on to um, on Sonia. And now with that, that's going to be the end. Rack Attack gets their heroic abilities. Team OVO just has to back away from this, despite the fact that they have lost people. They've also lost the race to the heroic abilities, and that will be an arcane Punisher that gets to be picked up by Rack Attack. Yeah, OVO needs to be playing this smarter. They, they need to not be overextending for these engages. They just need to... They're going to lose the early game. There's, they're not yeah. going to win the early game at all. Uh, but they keep trying to try and win the early game, which is just putting them further and further behind. They're down seven kills to one right now. And they need to stop that. If they keep doing what they're doing this game, it will be Rack Attack's game to win. They need to just kind of repace themselves and plan to hit 16 before they lose the game. Right. I really like that Rack Attack not only picked up the Punisher, but also made sure to take down the towers and uh, the gate so that there's no just safely baiting the Punisher away. They've tried to pull him back a little bit, but they're still having to do with those arcane uh, barriers that do so much damage. And so because of this, because of the great way that they got aggressive with those heroic abilities, not only did they get the towers and the gate, but they've picked up the fort, and this Punisher is still fairly healthy. They can even put a little bit of pressure onto the towers in front of this keep. See them contesting this point. The Punisher is going to leap over the wall. That's a lot of damage on the Murd in there. Oof. Nice burst coming out from uh, Rack Attack there. They're going to get one of the towers on this front wall and just back out. Same time, Sony split pushing bottom. That's what they need to do. They need to be soaking three lanes right now, though, not just two. Uh, but they do finally get level 10. It will be Hyperion picked up. I'm not going to be seeing Rainers, Raiders, and then everything else looking pretty ordinary. It is going to be the Divine Palm, which they definitely need. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to get it to. All right now we see how they will be able to control uh, the mercenary camps, but looks like Rakitek just continually wants to get into more of these fights. They're trying to find people. The piercing bolt hits a couple of the members, but there goes panel bars and Rainer just eliminated. The wailing arrow comes out, but won't be able to save the, uh, the Rainer, and that's already a first kill. That's just going to once again push Ovio back and allows Rakitek to again get aggressive with these mercenary camps and control them. I mean, they're just being way too for far forward, way too aggressive with the positioning. They just need to just be soaking this game and not trying to fight. Uh, Rainer was as far forward as Murden, and that should never be the case. And of course, he wasn't even near his Karazim. Uh, Karazim should be glued to Rainer like, you know, gluing paper to something. <laughs> paper to other paper? Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to glue two sheets of paper together, that is that is what you should be doing. <laughs> If Excellent metaphor. I really, I get yeah, it now. I nailed I that it. one. Yeah, I painted a very clear picture in the head of all our viewers. <laughs> oh, an added bonus of taking out Rainer so much, like they have too, is he's not even halfway to his seasoned marksman stacks too, and that just is slowing down their ability to get very aggressive in the late game without being able to get that. And they've gotten towers and the gate again in front of this. They're going to lose the Oculus if they're not carefully. Dwarf tosses away and they have to use Hyperion just to try to zone out the members of Rack Attack. Talos really trying to go for the kill, but a Shrink Ray will make sure that he gets slowed down and Handlebars can escape. Yep. Saving the Divine Storm is very important for this next point. And then, of course, uh, we did see that the Gust was used, but we got 30 seconds to let back up. Uh, whereas Hyperion was used on the other end, and that's a much longer cooldown. 75 seconds lets up, so it will not be up for this Shrine phase. I was just checking out ETC picked up groupies to help out Uther and Tassadar with the healing, potentially getting ready for that late game damage spike of OVO too. I see you smiling. What's up, buddy? Are you excited for groupies? I nothing. We're good. Okay. Twitch chat's making me laugh. <laughs> okay. Well the shrine has started. They know that without 13 there's not gonna be really a contest here. And so they're trying to catch people out um, for maybe going for this top fort, these top structures to get the experience, but that has left Kerrigan solo for that frozen Punisher at the shrine. 
And with members of OVO starting to funnel in, I like that the rack attacker just making sure to zone. Wherever this goes, where, uh, wherever that shrine would have spawned, they would be able to get a lot out of it. But it's going to be going toward that bottom fort, which is very, very low already. They'll see what damage they can get with this. They still still have the talent advantage. Handlebar is very far forward, gets hit by the Ancient Spear. Does get the knockback though, and is going to be able to disengage. Puncher is going to take out that bottom fort very easily here, and uh, they're going to be looking to siege down this, uh, at least get the keep wall here. I don't think they'll be able to get much more than that though. I'm very glad that e OVO didn't try to funnel down to attack Handlebars more, because that would have been a very easy way to walk right into a mosh pit. Um, but with that too, they, they know that they can't get this fort, so they just stayed back behind the gate, got ready to bait the Punisher as soon as it did get up to the gate at this keep wall. And they've eliminated the Punisher, but the towers in front of the keep and the gate will go to rack attack. OVO, this is their one time to fight. You see them trying to chase them down. They know this is the window before their opponents get 16, but they are not catching them. No, they're going to be able to disengage here, and they almost have 16. This is OVO's one chance where they're going to be on a tier anytime soon, and they're not going to be able to get it. They're going to try and get a camp with this, though. Um, they're, not, they're not going to be too afraid to engage. This Falsa does fly mid to try and get his team 16 there. Wang Sing does scout it out. Will they be able to contest this point? Handlebars go straight on to it. Theoklis is already taking some poke here. Dansky looking for the flank. He's trying to get the gust in, and there he does use it. Mosh Pit is used, but immediately interrupted by Rainer. The Vine Shield is actually a little bit slow on that. Wailing Arrow comes out. Dansky does end up getting the barrel roll over the wall to last. Very Fire 4 does get the kill on the handlebars there, and finally they're able to secure themselves another kill against OV or uh, Rack Attack. Yeah, they get the kill, they get the camp. They do use high, a lot of heroic abilities for it, but so did Rack Attack in that fight. And Rack Attack, they didn't have 16 there. That was the one time that OVO wanted to get in the fight. Do you think that they should have just let them just give up that uh, camp? Um, I mean, they could have contested that. They just should not have wasted two heroics. They wasted divine. They wished, wasted mosh pit. Got interrupted by Rainer's uh, mm -hmm. penetrating round. And then they raced Divine Shield, trying to make it to where the Divine the Mosh Pit was uh, not interruptible. He used it a half second late, and then it just got no value. Neither heroic got any value, essentially. Um, so you can contest that if you want. It's probably best to wait till 16. But mm -hmm. if you want to contest it, you can. Just don't waste two heroics. That was a huge win, too, for OVO because they had Sylvanas, and that just shows you how powerful Sylvanas can be. That wasn't even the battleground objective. That was a Khazra camp. Khazra camps do, like, next to nothing. But because it's Sylvanas, because they got that kill, too, and everyone was low and had to leave, they got a full fort from it, and that is helping them so much get back into this game experience-wise. Also, you mentioned Raynor being able to stall out the mosh pit, and that's going to be a lot easier, too, because they picked up a Relentless Leader at 13. Yeah. And that's something that we saw a lot for the Rainer picks before, before he kind of phased out to deal with the ETC's mosh pit. Let's see the point being contested here by OVO. Rack attack, or rack attack, excuse me, OVO just trying to get themselves level 16, and they'll be able to get it off of this bottom wall here. Uh, but are they going to go contest all they're up on the same tier? Do you see that Paul fall said flies down? Handlebar's looking for the flank here. Get some poke onto Talaz. It is now 16 versus 17. So OVO has caught up. They still don't have their uh, season marksman finished on Rainer, so they still got a ways to go for that. Kerrigan's still sitting on the point. Just farm and stacks here. The rest of uh, OVO is rotating up, so uh, Deadly Ice has to back out of there. Yeah, but they are so close, they only need nine more. Should be easy enough for them to poke down. They've got the psionic storms. They have some hammerings too from Dainsky. As long as they just kind of sit around here, make sure not to take too much damage, they should be able to poke down the final three that they need. And there it is. Uh, it does end up going on over to Rack Attack. We saw Will of Forsaken was used there as well by Sylvanas, so that is on cooldown. She is a target for Deadly Ice as well as ETC who's coming up from above. The Punisher trying to zone them back here. There's going to be another fort going over to Rack Attack. They get the combo down onto Sylvanas there. Force Wall comes out, Haunting Wave. Actually, Wailing Arrow used... Uh, oh my gosh! ...very poorly there. Did not expect them to be able to get that much done with that combo, but they made it work. They even forced the Divine Pomp, so it's 50 seconds, but they won't have that. Punisher gets bolt, uh, baited over. Combo hits the Oculus, but... He is uh, a little tankier than the last target they could hit with that. And they will again be able to open up this keep wall for future pushes. This is a good thing for uh, OVO as they're only down a level right now. Um, and this is, you know, we, we talk about how they got a late game composition. As long as you're not versus Sylvanas or Zul, you can usually make it to the late game on this map. Um, 
as you just don't have any pushing potential. We've seen multiple Punishers go over to Rack Attack and still all three keeps are standing. Now, if the next Punisher Phage is won by Rack Attack, that's going on to an exposed keep, so that'll be a right. bit different of a situation. But uh, they've held on. Let me take a look at the stacks here. About three-fourths of the way through, so still uh, not having Berserk yet, which is uh, really unfortunate for uh, OVO. Yeah, and I think that really comes down to how well Rack Attack were able to find Rainer constantly out of position earlier on. They've, they've slowed down his ability to rotate between the lanes because usually you have that rotation between mid and bot, but they got caught out a lot with that. And speaking of caught out, there's Will of the Forsaken being used as well as Wing Sing going to uh, get back with the Haunting Wave and they'll get away from that potential to get picked. But uh, because of the aggression of Rack Attack, they are once again controlling these mercenary camps and that forces OVO just to respond, stay back in their base, knock it out and get anything like that of their own. Well, level 19 versus level 18 very soon here for these two teams. Very close to the Storm Talents. Um, which could lead to a very devastating push here for Rack Attack. If Rack Attack wins this shrine and gets a keep, they will have 20 for a core push. As long as they don't lose many people in that fight, and that could be game. If Double Sun goes down, Dansky taking a lot of damage. He is going to barrel back. Good poke onto Giletto with just one hanger hammering. He puts uh, Giletto almost to half HP. The shrine is about to activate. As all of the team members are here, this is the time for OVO to get into a huge fight. They cannot start losing keeps, and this keep has already been exposed. It's already taken some damage, but there is the boomerang once again starting to take down the back line. That's always a great thing that you have with False Dawn, especially now that his hammering is doing more damage with Gathering Storm into the later game. Handlebar is looking for the power side, gets pushed back away, and he knows that he has to watch out for the mosh pit now because of Rainer, because he's got penetrating round, as well as that relentless leader. Deadly Ice looking for it. Tiago's doing a good job of zoning so far. Love Gelato's positioning so far. He's just playing fire far back. There it goes with Divine Shield Mosh, but it was cleansed out. I don't know why they used Divine Shield Mosh for only uh, hitting a Murd in there, but uh, uh, they're going to go ahead and back out of there. Again, really poor usage of that combo coming out from uh, Rack Attack. Yeah, it's like the minute they got Relentless Leader, it's like, who do we even hit? How do we make this work? We have to use the Divine Shield because of Penetrating Round, but we can't hit. Rainer is just going to go away, but Divine Palm has been used. It has not been propped, and now Giletto still at about half health. Mighty Gus is going to push people away. They're trying to just take out Talas as he's been separated from the rest of the team. Hammer of Justice is going to hit him, but he gets back in time to Team OVO. All of the heroics now have been used. Yeah, I can understand wanting to use the mosh pit there just to kind of either force the clan, force the palm, force something out of them. But there was no, when you knew that was only a one-person mosh pit, there was no need for Panda Grape to even use the Divine Shield. Uh, right, especially it was Muradin too, so it's not yeah. like it's going to be the easiest of targets to blow up. Well, this is going to be the first Punisher of this game going over to OVO. Um, they are down 20 versus Knight 18 now. I uh, don't know if they can really afford to contest this versus Storm Towns, but they look like they want to do it. They have the Sylvanas, which they're on even scale. This could be a very scary push for uh, OVO, but uh, the Storm Talent advantage is definitely in favor of Rack Attack. Yeah, it looks like they're okay with giving up the fort just to put some damage on the Punisher, but they've only brought, brought it down to about half health, and now are going to start losing damage on these towers too. And with the Sylvanas, they need to bring this down quickly or they're going to start having to face with all of the members potentially on their keep. But again, no Storm Tier Talon, so that might be a really tough spot to be in. There is the aggressive flying from Dainsky with a mighty gust. Good force wall to try to zone Gelato away. That is the target. He gets hit by the palm. Punisher is going to leap onto multiple people here. Storm Shield use tasks are getting very low. I think the Punisher was still alive, helped uh, OVO a lot with this disengage. It could have been completely different, but now we're on even footing. It's 20 versus 20. Neither team has lost a keep here. There are some pretty uh, big waves pushing in for uh, Rack Attack, but uh, the game is starting to uh, you know, more level out here, and if, we, if Rack, Cap, Rack Attack keeps having these really sloppy engages, uh, you know, with it being late game, we do finally have Season Marksman finish for Rainer. This is OVO's game to take. Yeah, Rack Attack has been in charge this entire game up to that point. And yet, with one Punisher push, OVO has done more damage to a keep because of their Sylvanas. And that aggressive fly, and you're right, it was fairly early because the Punisher was still active. They were, they were trying to catch somebody with the fly, the gust, and the, uh, the force wall. They were trying to catch Rainer before everyone started to run away. Bolt use there from uh, ATC. Um, so that's down for a minute. 
We'll see uh, when the next Punter for sure phase is going to spawn. Good job from uh, Rack Attack for at least aggressively cleaning up these camps and keeping these waves shoved in. This is uh, really, really good for them. Looks like they're going to try and siege down this bottom keep, potentially. I love the position from Handlebars to scout the uh, potential flank that could come in. I don't think they can get this keep here, though. It's actually really a uh, greedy play here. Zagreb so yeah. taking a lot of poke from that tower. He, got, he lost half his HP from the fort alone. Yeah, there's no camp here even. It's just the minion wave that they're going off of. Yeah, they're going to back off out of that. I was looking at a lot of the ability art that was updated, and it looks really cool. Yeah. Like, Essence for Essence, instead of being a Blood for Blood now, is uh, an Essence the assimilation talent. And uh, Will of the Forsaken and Relentless Leader. Yeah, Blizzard's art team. Once again, proven they are awesome. Yeah, and Nerves of Steel and Ignore Pain. Ignore Pain is like kind of gruesome, but it's awesome. Yeah, it is really cool. But uh, I love relearning talent icons. <laughs> yeah. I know! <laughs> Every time. <laughs> it's worth it. It looks really awesome. And at least generally for those ones, you know what is going to be taken there, so it's not as big of a deal. The, the last rework was a little rough. But here we go with the fight, guys, as this next immortal, or this Punisher phase is about to start, will be a frozen Punisher. And the positioning started to be good for Rack Attack, but with OVO and that uh, Hyperion coming in, they're really going to be able to zone away the members and start to catch back up, even get ahead in these skeletal defenders. Really early Avatar pop and not yeah. going to be getting much value out of it, so that's going to be down. Here comes uh, Dansky flying in, does get the Gust onto Giletto. He's very far forward, but a good three-man Wailing Arrow there, and Deadly Eyes taking a lot of damage. So is uh, Tassadar there. Dice Storm Shield being used, Divine Shield used onto Kerrigan. Talaz might end up getting the Tassadar. Zugrug trying to get out of here. Panda Grape's getting very low, and the first of all is going to be Kerrigan. Oh man, they got 20, and Team OVO got so tanky. They sustained through the Maelstrom, through so much damage, and in the back line this whole time, Giletto is starting to shred through health bars for Rack Attack. Two down. They're going to be able to do the exact same thing we saw Rack Attack do earlier. Put damage on the structures and then send somebody back to finish off that uh, Shrine phase. Even with the Sylvanas too, they're getting a keep off of this. A few things went really poorly there for OVO. A, the uh, Wailing Arrow was perfectly timed from, uh, excuse me, for Rack Attack. Uh, yeah. It was perfectly time from Rack Attack. Wing it was Zang so good. Nailed that perfectly. The Mighty Gust was going to put uh, Rainer in a bad spot. The Wailing Arrow came out perfectly. But the other thing that uh, Rack Attack did wrong in that flight was they keep focus firing to Laz. Laz is right. still a level 20 Sonya. He's not going to die ever. Yeah. Uh, like He's just unkillable when, you know, Giletto was also very far forward. So poor target fire, uh, target choosing there from uh, Rack Attack as well as uh, that was just a really great uh, Wailing Arrow from Wing Zang. Yeah, the Gust, too, was really good. He went back into the back and pushed Giletto right next to his team. You're right, the Rainer was the target there, but they were not targeting and bringing him down, and in that amount of time, he just, like, turned around and was like, okay, I guess I'll just shoot from here then, and was able to pick up those kills. And now they're facing all five members of Team OVO, plus this very full, very healthy Frozen Punisher all heading toward the core. Hyperion comes out. I don't see them stopping this, and it looks like we'll be going to game number three, Zoya. Yeah, core's falling very fast. Gelato's getting very level. Fine Palm does end up connecting. There is that wailing arrow coming out. Dansky's very, getting very low. Zugrug's in deep. The Punisher is just wailing away at the core, though. He's at 15%. With false said that that's going to be GG, and we have a tied series. Uh, you know, we talked about in the draft, OVO's comp is the definition of late game, and they made it to the late game without losing a keep. And that's all you got to do in that situation. Um, it's just, no, you know, make it to late game. They, they tried not to, though. They tried really hard in the early yeah. game to die as much as they could. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, once they did finally hit that late game point, um, you know, Talaz became unkillable. And then Raynor probably quadrupled his damage once he actually got Berserk and an Executioner. Yeah, he ended up doing 93,000 <laughs> yep. damage. Doesn't surprise me. Rainer, once he has <laughs> once he has <laughs> Mark and Quest and Executioner, he is, the, he is the strongest hero in the game if he goes uncontested. If you just let Rainer attack you when he's got Executioner and Berserk up, everything dies. Well, the everything dies should be the title of that game because that is exactly what happened. Well, we are going to take a break while we get ready for game number three between Ovio and Rack Attack. Don't go anywhere. We will see you soon.
Welcome back, guys. Sorry about that blast of music. I may have gotten a little excited for our game number three between Rack Attack and Team OVO. The draft has started, so let's hop on over to that. Zoya. Hello. We have a, we have a Toronto ban on Battlefield of Eternity. Are you surprised? Mm. Surprised, yes, but don't think it's bad. It's not something we see too often on this map. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a fine ban for this map. Hunter's Mark is insane on the yeah. Immortals. And Sylvanas, uh, last game, we saw how important she could be with a Punisher and an Immortal is the exact same. So she's going to be banned, but that means Illidan again is available. I think uh, if Illidan wasn't picked up on Infernal Shrines, we're not going to see anyone pick him up here. As I would say, this is probably his worst map in the pool, which isn't really a thing. Illidan's good on every map, mm -hmm. uh, but if you were to say he has a worst map, I would say it's Battlefield, probably. And why so, is that? It's just two-lane map, not a lot of mobility. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of situations you're having to siege into your opponent, and sometimes that's not the best situation for Illidan. You want to wait for the right opportunity, and whenever you're like flipping and flopping all over people, and then you're fighting underneath someone's immortal at the same time, you're gonna get hit by random stuns from the immortal. It's it's harder to get the right value out of him. And if they weren't willing to pick him on one of his best maps, which is Infernal Shrines, then he's probably gonna go and contest this game, which is just crazy. But <laughs> while well, leaming. And potentially Greymane will be damage dealers instead for Rack Attack, instead of going for that Illidan. Meanwhile, OVO had picked up Murden as their first pick. And again, we're going to see Uther grabbed before these mid-tier bans. So they're getting their warrior and their support, making sure that Rack Attack can't target ban them in one of those support warrior um, roles and leaving, leaving damage until later on. Uther here, potentially the pickup for OVO. I'm not really picking up any super seed heroes early on, which uh, can be a struggle on this map. Uh, Rack Attack already has a lot of damage for the Immortals. I like the Rhaegar more than Uther on yeah, this map. Yeah, me too. A lot. Um, Rhaegar is just great siege damage. Allows you to ban out the Uther as well versus the Grey Main. Mm -hmm. And you can get Lightning support. Bond, too. Yeah. Helps more with the damage. So there's the Rhaegar. What damage will they pick up here? Potentially the Sonya. Sonya. Maybe Falstad. the Tass. Depends on how they want to play it. I'd be pretty surprised if we saw Tassadar. I but we had that last like time, right? A and a half ago. Well, right now, Tastar just seems to be first pick, first ban on, like, every map. But with what they've already picked, you would still not I mean, be surprised I'd, if like, you saw that? They're not picking Illidan, so, like, it just kind of, like, throw out all thoughts. <laughs> and roll with that. Kael'thas is an interesting pick here. He's not the best siege damage versus the Immortal until he gets 16. Even then, they'd nerf that damage, so... Um, another situation where... Uh, this is a map where you can't stall out easily to late game. Yeah. This is a map that if you have a late game comp and your opponent has an early game comp, which right now Rack Attack definitely wins the early game hard, it is going to be a struggle for OVO. I wonder if we'll see OVO go for the Sunfire Enchantment uh, Verdant Spheres build that you and I see a lot more in Asia instead of focusing on that Gravity Lapse build with Gravity Crash. Or they could just be focusing on trying to win the team fights around the Immortals, but even, even when you do that it doesn't work out early on because the respawn timers are so low. You still end up usually losing the first couple of Punishers. Well, what will Rack Attack's ban be? Probably need to target it at a damage. Maybe if they are afraid of the Tassadar. Potentially Tassadar, so, or Sonya. I would like to see banned out here from Rack Attack. Mm-hmm. They're going to go with Thrall, denying uh, that melee assassin instead. Um, I so think maybe I like, Rack Attack oh. wants Sonya. Yeah, that's possible. They do have the next two picks. Uther going to be banned out, no surprise there. Um, just denying the Uther to the Grey Main. All 
Alright, now rack attack. What will they pick? They still need their warrior, still need a support. And something else to could grab Tassadar here for the shields to help out with whatever support they're gonna get, especially because Uther and Rhaegar are off the table. Karzim is somebody we see quite a bit on Battlefield of Eternity. He can lend his strength to the immortal fights. And they are looking at Tassadar to assist their support. Hmm. I mean, the Tassadar, I think, is fine here. If you have a great main mm -hmm. Liaming, you've got plenty of siege damage. Right. Especially since they know what OVO's potential options are. I think no matter what the next two picks are for OVO, um, they struggle. Uh, with uh, killing the immortals. Strike attack willing to lock in the ETC here. Potentially go for the Joanna as well. Great interrupting, good stalling, great on the points. They're gonna go ahead and lock in their Karazim though. Go for that double support. Keep the um, I like that option. I think either way they're going Karazim, right? Like the, there's, yeah. there's a chance they go Brightwing, but more than likely they're like there's a ninety percent chance they're going Karazim. Whereas your warrior chance can be left up in the air. There's already two interrupts for ETC. If you do lock in ETC now, you give OVO the chance to pick up more interrupts. Um, so like say OVO goes warrior uh, heroes without interrupts, like maybe Arthas. Um, you know, the option of going ETC is a little bit more viable. Mm-hmm. So I like leaving the warrior option up in the air. I am excited about Greymane because I realized that Rack Attack has Deadly Ice. And Deadly Ice first really became a, a known name because of his Greymane play before the Spring Regional Championships. So I'm pretty pumped to see that once again. And Zogrog has been playing a lot of the Tassadar. So some comfort picks coming out for Rack Attack in this game number three, which of course you will see. Uh, in the third game of that best of five or a uh, best of three but important to remember here that unlike the other qualifiers the loser of this is not out because it is double elimination and with Arthas oh. is it Vala? It is Vala. It's a lot of poke looks like a good team fight composition it unfortunately that just happens to be on this map um I like the Anubarak pick for multiple reasons um I think it's the best in this situation um, as he is the only warrior up that gives good executioner options for Greymane. Um, An executioner is the talent we'll be seeing at 16 on him all the time now. Um, it's just so insane, the new executioner. Uh, Joanna only really gets her heroic that gives the uh, executioner. Um, ETC, just the power slide, and some, and Mosh Pit too, but Mosh Pit I think is too vulnerable versus this composition, even with right. it only being Kel'thas Muradin. Uh, it's going to be hard for them to get value out of the Mosh. They could take uh, Reign of Vengeance too, and then put yourself in yeah. a really bad position. So I like the Anub pick. You can do Solo Warrior Anub now. Um, gives you uh, more consistent options for Executioner, so. Alright, and especially with double support too. If they've got it covered. Again, I I like the rack attack comp composition. Leeming and Greymane, they've got good damage for the Immortals. Um, OVO added more with Vala. What do you think? Do you like OVO or rack attacks? Um, I mean, I like rack attacks. This, comes, this map always comes down to, unless you have a true hard engage brawler composition like we see sometimes in China with like the Tyrael double warrior dive comps, it always comes down to who wins the immortal phase. And Rack Attack wins that easily. As long as they rotate to the immortals before OVO, they will win that race every time with Grey mainly Ming. Mm -hmm. um, it's not even a close race um, until late game. When Kael'thas gets 16, well, when Vala starts getting a little bit more damage, um, OVO can keep up. But early game, Rack Attack wins the Immortals. And unless OVO is going to be super aggressive with their composition, which based off the Towers of Doom game where they had a noob Sonya and they still weren't there, I would not assume they'd be doing the same here. So I think Rack Attack has the better comp. On the topic of, of Executioner, too, looking at Vala, she has a lot of options with that once they get to 16. Yeah. Well, Vala's always been like a uh, self-executioner procker anyway. That's why you yeah, see hybrid true. build with uh, multi-shot talents at 1 and 13. So mm -hmm. she procs for herself, but then, of course, you've got Muradin stuns, Kael'thas stuns, and then, of Arthas course, slows. everything Arthas does procs <laughs> yeah. execution. So once Vala hits 16, uh, you know, she's going to be a monster of damage. She's going to do insane damage, but again, it's a late-game comp versus a early-game comp on an early-game map. Right.
Well, we'll see who can clutch it out and get this final victory and go on to face the winner of Sidestorm Gaming and Cloud9. Here in the blue is Brack Attack with Zugrug playing Karazim, Panda Grape on Tassadar, Handlebars playing a new Barak who is doing some crazy things, Deadly Ice on Greymane, and finally playing Li Ming will be Dansky. And on the right hand side of the map, it's going to be OVO Gaming, or Team OVO. I keep calling them OVO Gaming. Were they called they, OVO Gaming? They at, were like, OVO right? Gaming before, yeah. That's yeah, why. You guys tilt me. Why, <laughs> why change? Uh, Theakos on Muradin, Gileto on Kael'thas, Talas playing Arthas, Wilted on Rhaegar, and Wang Sang playing Vala. Here we go, seeing how they are going to set up. Rack Attack is already ready in their lanes. They are playing it safely, knowing that there is a lot of potential to get caught with a lot of the uh, stuns that Team OVO have that we were mentioning earlier in uh, toward the end of the draft. And that means the Greyman will be up in the top. Arthas is going to go up there to join him, and the 4v4 will happen in bottom from the rest. So interesting to see Hungering Arrow build picked up from Vala. Um, this is like the composition that you would like say is like one of the best comps in the world to have the auto build for and we're seeing a hungering arrow build this is really interesting decision making from wang saying um he's not going to be in too many 1v1 scenarios that's usually when you do see the hungering arrow build is like versus like a zeratul or a falstad um so i don't know i think that's a really uh interesting talent pick up here from wang saying to go this style I like that we saw Giletto try to pick up handlebars with a gravity lapse and he ended up hitting a, a beetle scarab and that is it's going to be very annoying for him all the time trying to deal with those something that uh, you can see fairly often as another thing would be you know a Li Ming versus that too the beetles can get away of her arcane orb um, we'll see Giletto trying to go to the side trying to make that happen but the first immortal phase should be starting here pretty soon yeah, we'll see uh, where the rotations are going to go. Are going to go. I would love. Nice double gravity lapse from Toledo getting some good poke onto Zugrug. I would love to see OVO contest. Um, unless we're just willing to just go for a trade and just have the weaker immortal here. But good initial rotation coming out from uh, Rack Attack here. And they're in the right spot for this. Uh, the Grey Main is going to be a bit slower on the rotation here. Um, and they are contesting so far with at least three members. They're trying to catch Grey Main opposition. OVO's playing this right. They're looking for the kills. Yeah, they want. They were trying to separate some of the members from each other too. Handlebars is off to the side, but the rest of Rack Attack are behind. Zugrug so going in for a couple of punches here and there, and just continually poking with the Leeming and the Gray Man, which is going to be really great. A perfect gravity lapse means the first blood picked up by OVO. Yep, great job from that. At the same time, Arthas isn't even with them. He's just kind of slapping away at the Punisher and Immortal, <laughs> and he, eventually he'll get it. You know, it's a, it's a slow race to uh, half HP, but uh, he's getting it. He is pretty low on mana though. Once he runs out of that, it's down to a Frostborn Hunger. Yeah, and Vala is even going to come up and help him too, but they will get it to halfway. S slow and slowly and surely. There it is going to go to the halfway point. But even with that, even with getting a kill and controlling and having two people up on the Immortal, still Rack Attacker not far behind, and that goes to show you how much siege damage they have. So interesting to try and contest this here uh, as Rack Attack. I feel like they still probably could have won this race if all four of them were split over there. Um, and now they're, they're they're not. You can't brawl underneath an Immortal versus the, uh, even if it's your own versus this composition. They're just going to slowly win out. I feel like if they would have just contested their or killed their own with five, they would have barely been able to edge it out there. So uh, interesting shot calling coming out from Rack Attack there, and uh, we do see the first Immortal is going to go over to OVO. And both teams have grabbed their level 4 talents too, so we'll see what they can get done with it as it's going to go to the bottom lane. And continuing on with the Hungering Arrow build, Arthas has picked up Frost or Eternal Hunger, his questing talent we'll keep an eye on too, as well as Death Lord. So he can have that Death Coil up more often. It seems like the Death Coil build is generally the one that we see, although I saw. Is it a Korean team going for more of the Frozen Tempest style build? In uh, Super I think League? that's the better build, personally. You um, like the Frozen Tempest one? Mm -hmm. I think when they nerfed the t 16 talent on Arthas, I think it was 20% to 10% mm -hmm. of the damage you do as a heal. Yes. Uh, I think that killed that build pretty hard. I think the Frozen Tempest build that we're seeing in Asia, and we see it from most teams in NA right now anyway, is going to be the go-to build. 
All right, Punisher, the Immortal is done. It has been taken out, did a little bit of damage to that bottom fort, but both teams still very close in experience and trying to get those level sevens in preparation for the next Immortal phase. Also trying to get some uh, presence on the battleground, especially with the uh, the mercenary camps. So you can see with Giletto with these uh, Khazra, because it is an open fort, it's forcing a lot of members from Rack Attack to come down and defend this and make sure it doesn't get anywhere near that fort. I think both teams are just about to hit level 7 here. We'll see uh, how this Immortal phase is going to go a little different again. I mean, uh, they're changing the play stuff from game 1. Game 1, OVO had the raw composition, but they just didn't play it right. That's what I was mainly worried about in this game. Uh, they played it right this first rotation, though. They got in the face of their opponents. They were able to slowly uh, win out the Immortal. But even then, there was mistakes on the end. A lot of mistakes on the end of Rack Attack, and Rack Attack still probably could have won that Immortal phase. It just shows you how hard it is to make Brawler comps work on this map. Um, so we'll see uh, what the plan is here um, for uh, OVO going into the mid game. Again, I'm really disliking the Hungering Arrow build more and more as this game goes on. This is when uh, Vala starts getting really great single target damage for those Immortals if she'll go in the uh, multi shot auto attack build. You get Serious right. Action 7. And uh, it's just, you know, this uh, Hungering Arrow build. Between that and the fact that we saw, once again, the Netherwind and Gravity Crush, I think they are just fully looking for those team fights. Hung Hungering Arrow means that she can try to flank and get a 1v1, and then with the Gravity Crush, you can do a lot more damage uh, with whoever whoever they can hit with the Gravity Laps too. So, yeah, that that to me screams that they want. They care more about winning the team fight and then the the Immortal fight. See here uh, what their plan is. Ovio gets the stun Gravity Laps follow-up combo onto a new Barak, but they don't even really tickle them there. Oh, we do have multiple pauses. And a PP. Hello, Gold League. Our old friend, the pause. We'll switch back over to camera. While we get this figured out, Dansky says he can't move. That's strange. He should try unlocking his elbows. I don't know. He tried. You were going somewhere with it. The Oculus needs to do. He just Again? had a bathroom break. Just the went Oculus. To the bathroom, bro. All right, we'll just figure we're figuring this out, guys. But we can talk about talents. Talk about what the team needs to do. I know you're not a big fan of the Hungry Arrow build. Do you think that that will help them with their brawling though? If they're if they're just wanting no. to get fully into fights, I'll not at so. all. I think. The hungering, I think the different. The only reason you go hungering air build is where, when it's like a solely mm -hmm. isolated target, like you know when Zeratul's trying to flank you, or when Falstad's you know off doing Falstad things in the corner. Um, what about if Greyman or Li Ming is trying to flank too? Then they just kill them because they have Arthas Murden. I don't see yeah. this is this is like a more of a poke comp for um, Rack Attack. I mean, it's not necessarily bad. It's not like, uh, like you know, they lose the game because it's hungry air build. I just feel you get much more value in this situation. Being able to catch someone with multi-shock slow is huge. Give yourself a self-proc executioner, and yep. it's better versus the immortals. I wonder if they'll still go executioner with this, or if they're thinking, like, blood for blood. I don't if know. like, really going for kind of a solo 1v1 style. For whomever it is, they're going to 1v1. I haven't really seen anyone go hungering arrow build since the change. I saw it. So I don't know what they took at 16. I think it was in the Super League, but I can't remember who they were up against. I saw it one time earlier, and I was like, is this making a comeback? Is this a thing again? Not sure. Uh, we've got a different Anubarak build than last time, too. Dampen Magic again at level 1. Will help out with that kill thos damage, but whereas before we had Legion of Beetles, now we have the Under King giving more range, giving more damage with the Burrow Charge, and then Kiteness Plating, um, taking d uh, damage from enemy abilities reduces its cooldown by uh, seventy point seven five seconds. Um, so that he has Kiteness Plating, he has his um, Hardened Carapace up more often. So a very tanky Anubarak build that we're seeing. Tanky, and then, of course, being able to run away, get get away further with your uh, burrow charge. 
How you doing, buddy? Yeah. Do you have any update on the bracket? Uh, yeah, Tempest Storm one two zero. Okay. Versus. I don't know. I don't remember who they're playing. Brawls Deep. Brawls Deep. Um, Cloud Nine beat Psy Storm Gaming two zero as well. All right, so that is who our winner of this game will face. And the winner of Team Blaze and Hot Dog Burglars will be up against Tempo Storm. Looking to see if there's a... Any update here. Do you know what time we paused at? A little over two minutes ago. Okay. So like two and a half minutes ago. How are you guys doing in chat? Oh, I guess we can't really talk to you because it's on a two minute delay. <laughs> I'm glad you saw that. <laughs> I was just going to tell you about that. Dainsky has left the game twice. So we're working on it, guys. You want to take a break until we get the... Up to you, homie. Paused? Up to you, homie. You are so helpful. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take a break, guys. We'll come back right into the game. See you in a second.
All right, guys, we're back. It was game number three between Rack Attack and OVO. Yeah. Lee Ming, Lee Ming was able to make it back. Dancing guys is back in the game. All should be set up, and we're just in time for the second Immortal phase. Let's see here how this is going to go. Root does go down as well as Gravity. That's good CC on the Zug Rug. He may lose his half his life, but he does survive to show you the power of that double support style. That was the Tassar and the Karazine. For those of you who are just now joining this game and forgot what the team comps were like I did. <laughs> yes. Very uh, CC style. Lots of uh, damage potentially into late game too, although we're, we're unsure about the Hungering Arrow build. But that's on the side of Team OVO. Meanwhile, Rack Attack is a great composition for Battlefield of Eternity, of course, because of the Leaming and the Greyman, and they have the d double support to keep them alive in those team fights. Both neck and neck in experience. Also in the immortal health bars. They really, both of them are just going after those fights as much as they can. Um, it's because of the positions, though. The defended position makes it tough for Rack Attack to throw the poke damage that they want on that Bread Immortal. Well, this is really great here for uh, OVOs. They are sieging this down pretty hard. They are forced to back out. I would like to see um, Deadly Ice potentially just like go for a weird flank onto the Immortal and then back out when he sees OVO retreat. He's not getting any value in this fight. He can't dive the Murden Arthas. He can't ever go great, uh, Worgen for him. He just kind of sits there and autos and cues down, which isn't really helping them at all in this defense. Like, he could not be there, and they probably wouldn't notice any difference in their damage. Um, so I would Ooh. like to see him rotate up, and just like whenever the uh, OBO moves forward, he goes gray main for him onto the Immortal, and then forces OBO to back out. I like that bob and weave play style, but uh, right now he's just kind of sticking with his team and not getting the best value. He was at least going up and clearing out the wave in the top lane, and we're seeing him go do that again, but so is Arthas, realizing that they're starting to get behind in experience. So at least he's trying to find some use for his team and helping them get their heroic ability so they can start to fight this. But I think, yeah, they're just going to have to wait until there's a better position for them um, before they ever can really do something, because if one of them gets caught by one of the, the crowd control, especially someone like Dancy or, um, or Deadly Ice on Greymane, they're going to be in a lot of trouble, even despite the fact that they have that double support, because there's just, there's so much, many ways to continue the crowd control train from the other heroes from OVO. About a half level to go until Rack Attack has that level 10. We are seeing a hard engage here coming out from OVO. They get the Gravitas combo onto Zugrug, and they keep catching him out of position, and they punish him pretty hard. And, and both Pandagrip and Zugrug are starting to get very low on mana, and uh, this is a huge advantage here for OVO as they uh, get the perfect Immortal spawn as both of their supports are backed out of here. And this will be the second Immortal of the game. Looks like going over to OVO. Handlebar's coming in here very low on health and mana, not even having enough uh, HP to really contest this at all. Chain Bomb <laughs> spreading a lot there. They almost have their heroic abilities, but still, they are going to lose this Immortal. It got way too low. It was perfect that they were able to force the swap and didn't need to go back the way that Rack Attack did. Even though Rack Attack gets the heroic ability sooner, they were trying to keep up with the Soak faster than OVO. They still are going to lose the Immortal and start to push into the top lane. Heroic seven abilities this time? Yeah, we're going to have seven sided strike this time. Ed Cocoon. I think that's the first time I've ever called it Cocoon without calling it Web Wrap like 30 times before. I'm so proud of you! We're learning! It only took two years. Yeah, I was like, that patch didn't happen that long ago. Oh, Cinder Gosa with this Immortal is going to be huge, and they get a kill on the Nubarak. Great damage here. I mean, this really working out here. And, uh, you know, we, we talked about in the draft, we were like, you know, Greymane makes sense. He, uh, he has the great siege damage, but right now, Greymane has brought no value to this game at all. Um, he hasn't been able to get any good siege damage opportunities just because of how scary it is to fight underneath a Murden and an Arthas. And he's not getting any value in this team fights because he can't. He can't really do anything until uh, with an auto build until 13 and 16. So the Greymane build is, is essentially been dead weight this entire time. You know, it's so funny. The last time that Arthas was in the meta, he came out and people were like, oh, he has Cindergosa. It's like having Black Arrow with Sylvanas without having to pick Sylvanas. How funny. And then they use it. And then it's like, oh, but actually, Army of the Dead, sustainability. That's pretty cool, too. And now he comes out, Army of the Dead first. And I'm wondering if we'll start to see a lot more Cindergosa like we're seeing here. I love that it does make a lot of sense with the Immortal. Talaz gets in trouble. The Cocoon has hit Wang Sing, but he's going to be able to vault away from that damage. And everybody, despite that very hard engage from Rack Attack, everyone from OVO escapes. 
Well, you, you, I mean, you talked about it before. Uh, I want to highlight it again. The gravity Lapse hitting a beetle there uh, really kind of made that fight. I think it was unwinnable either way there for Ovia, just because of how low they were on mana and how their positioning was. But mm -hmm. uh, a gravity Lapse connecting with a beetle there really made things much worse as well. Um, so a really good job uh, from uh, Handlebars with that Nubarak pickup, just really like trying to shut down the Kel'Thas as much as they can here. Getting some poke down on this bottom fort here. They're keeping even almost on experience, only down about a quarter level right now. So they're just about to hit level thir or level 12. Yeah, both teams are trying to get those 13 talents in time for the next Punisher. Uh, Immortal, man, I am just getting wrecked by the Punishers and the Mortals today. That's going to be fun all day long. <laughs> have fun with that. But both the teams are getting their uh, Bruiser Camps so that they can have those pushing. Those are the very strong pushing or, uh, mercenary camps that uh, are on this battleground and may definitely, I think... Uh, for the top one because it's going all the way to the keep that's something that rack attack will want to keep in mind also they're not 13 so this, this is going to be a tough start to this phase well, we'll see here if they can win this out i'm curious as to what 13 talent we're going to see from muradin um we do see a lot of damage going down onto wang saying there but he's just barely going to be able to back off great hard engage really good job from uh, rack attack to force them off this point yeah, they're still defending too, but they've sent Li Ming up and Greymane is starting to follow too. They know that at the very least, Wang Sing had to go back and tap the well, which she has done. And now she is back in the fight. And with that, they've got 13 talents too. And Rack Attack has to play this very, very carefully. But they have done a lot of damage by sending Dansky and Deadly Eyes up. And they will not be the one to force the swap, but they're very, very close. Yeah, this is a very close race here. We'll see uh, who this is going to come on favor. It does end up in the defensive positions here. And uh, Rack Attack is going to be looking to force another fight, but they are not level 13 yet, Gilly. They really, really want that. Will be Thunderstrike picked up here on Murden. But a single target damage. Yeah, last game we had healing static too. Yeah. You're starting to see a little bit more of that? Mm hmm. With Give Him the Axe getting it more viable too. Mm -hmm. Especially with this comp, Give Him the Axe is definitely viable. Plenty of things to proc that off of. The fight is starting to break out again. 13 has been picked up by Rack Attack, so they can feel like they can get back into the fight. We haven't seen a seven sided strike yet, really. Yeah. And. I don't think it's been cast once. Yeah. So maybe they could find the target here, but that may just be how well OVO has made sure not to have somebody that's too separated out. Oh, Handlebar is very far forward. Doesn't have Burrow up. Seven side strike goes down. Wang Sang is the first to fall in this fight. Great fight for. Uh, uh, rack attack here. They get the resets and go on to Talaz here. Well, it does come out of the cocoon. Gravity Lapse connects with Zugrug, but uh, he's going to be able to finish off as Immortal, and it's going to be the first Immortal of the ga uh, game for uh, Rack Attack this time. I love the seven-sided strike combination with the cocoon. They could take one person out of that yeah. area space, throw seven-sided strike down. Vala was trying to get a lot out of strafe and paid for it with her life. And I love the way that they were able to to combo those up. It's kind of similar to when we would see um, like a hook from Stitches and seven-sided strike, or even the seven-sided strike with the entomb from Leoric too. Making sure that they have something that can assist with separating out, so that you're not just randomly grabbing that heroic. There is a very good way for them to be able to segregate somebody away and get the maximum damage from them or from that. We talked about it earlier how the Frozen Tempest build was probably going to be the more popular build for Arthas, but I like the Death Coil build on this map specifically, especially with how is playing. It's more of like a siege you, like we're going to try and you know catch them on a position, more long fights, as it's really hard to get that hard engage whenever you're positioned well. Um, and we're seeing that extra uh, sustain from the Q build. Uh, going to be helping out a lot for Arthas. And he still did get Frigid Waste, which is going yeah. to be slowing down, or Frigid Winds, sorry, slowing down the attack speed. And um, if they can get that, especially on Greymane, that's going to be really great. But also Karzim, if he's able to get Karzim in there, it's going to be slowing down his attack speed and may be able to stop him being, from being able to get uh, his heals out as much. Well, I do really like the, uh, the Karzim build this game. Um, I don't think cleanse is needed. I know that's going to sound weird versus this much CC, but there's no real... 
Until Kael'thas hits 16, there's no insane blow-up potential, right? You can lock a target down. We've seen them do that a lot to both Kerzim, to Anubarak, um, and to Li Ming. You know, they get the insane CC chain, but uh, there's just not enough single-target burst to kill the target versus both Kerzim and Tassadar. So the double heal at 7 is actually... Um, keeping them alive through the CC and not having to go cleanse. So it just allows, again, more sustain. Um, I like it a lot. I, wouldn't, I, I didn't think it would look good initially versus this comp, but... Well, 16 is here for Rack Attack. Team OVO still about a level behind of being able to get that. And that means that they've got Mirror Ball. They've got a lot more damage. They've got Deep Shift or uh, Dimensional greens. Warp too. Oh yeah, Soothing Breeze and stuff. So yeah, they didn't get the cleanse, but they've been able to make it through. And now, yes, they're they're going to soon be up against that level 16 blow-up potential with the Kael'thas, like you talked about. But they're adding Soothing Breeze onto it, but won't have the extra healing from the Circle of Life. But since they have a double okay support, yeah. You think it's what? I think it's an okay trade-off. Yeah. Um, it, allows, it helps a lot versus this style. Um, you know, it's not the normal Kerzian build we see, but I do not think it's necessarily bad in this situation. Not level 16 yet. Looks like the race is going to be uh, on the aggressive side here. And we see that uh, so far it's pretty even right now, but now that Greymane's in Worgen form, is, are they going to shoot ahead? And it looks like they do have a lead. It's so hard to tell. I can't read numbers like this. It was super close, but yes, just barely it was won by Rack Attack. And they still have 16 over their opponents. Yeah. And Ovio realized this. They are heading back in the lanes. They're trying to get the soak. Greymane is also soaking up in the top, though, because that keep has taken some damage. And this may be a perfect time for Team Ovio to come into the fight and try to kill some people, especially once they can get those 16s. Oh, I think it was a mistake to not immediately go into the Immortal Phase for Rack Attack. This gives mm -hmm. Ovio a chance right now. Um... The Immortals is in favor of OVO right now, and they still have that siege potential. Yes, Kel'Thas gets 16 soon, so though, despite it being so close this time, now that Kel'Thas has 16, his individual siege damage just went up a lot um, now that he has his 16 turn count. Subrag getting very low, does use the 7 side strikes, Talos taking some light damage, but still no nothing forced just yet. We finally see Deadly Ice and Dansky rotate up here. Dansky getting very low, Zugrag trying to keep his teammates alive. Can they force the Immortal phase to end? It's good. It looks like the race is happening, Ooh. but it will go in favor of Rack Attack just barely. Man, they hit 16 and Vala became a problem for Rack Attack. She did still pick up Frost Shots to go along with that Executioner. Yeah. And then, of course, you talked about Sun King's Fury, so they've got the damage there from Kael'thas. But still, even so, Rack Attack just barely won that. It's not fully shielded, and it will. Um, it, it's actually got very little in shielding, but it still is going to be heading toward the keep, uh, the keep wall. Oh my god, Kael'thas when he hits 16. Even with the nerf, <laughs> still almost takes out Handlebars by himself. Um, we do have the siege here from uh, Rack Attack. Don't see them getting a keep unless they get a kill right now, which uh, they should not be able to. Immortals at half HP. Front wall should go down here, uh, but uh, no keeps falling just yet, which is good for OVO. They've got their power spike now. They have 16 Anub, they have or, or 16 Arthas, they have 16 Vala, they have 16 Kael'thas. This is a big tier for them. Um, so now they just need to make sure they can win a team fight before Rack Attack gets 20. They're looking for Pandagrape. Now, Giletto gets hit by a big leaming combo from the side of Force Wall, trying to allow the team the, the space needed to escape, and they will get it. Some mercenary camps are available, and Team Ovio will go straight for this bottom one. And now the big race is for 20. We've got 18 to almost 17 for Rack Attack. So again, they've continued to keep a, a, a good handle on the soak so they can try to once again win that fight toward the next talent tier. But in taking down this fort, that will be a, a lot of damage or a lot of experience back for OVO in that fight. Level and a half lead right now for Rack Attack. They're wanting to uh, w get 20 as soon as they can. Oh, well, that's good. That top wave is huge. It's going to help. Yeah. It's, it'll be a long stall for Rack Attack to get 20, um, which I could see them trying to do. Just stall out the Immortal Phase until they have 20. they got a full level to go right now. Probably can get a one or two more waves. Uh, but uh, if they do stall out properly, they can get 20 during this next Immortal Phase, and that would be huge for them. Bruisers are also avail going to be available. Um, pretty soon for the teams, but this is not going to be a good start. They get hit by Howling Blast and Gravity Lapse goes on to the Anubarak, but he gets away. But still, that's great. That does slow down their rotation between the lanes. And yeah, this is going to be, uh, like you said, it's a lot, still quite a ways away until Rack Attack would have those 20 Storm Talents. 
They're three fourths of the way there. Immortal is spawning now, and they did get this Merc camp that's going to be sieging that bottom keep, so we'll have to be cleaned up. Top keep, like you said, already taking some damage for Rag Attack, so they'll have to clean up the Immortal siege in there. And the race is happening now. It's been close every time, but now that Kael'thas has 16, this could be a different story here. Yeah, they're both just trading out the damage, neither wanting to get the fight, believing they could win it, and it is close. But it looks like our blue team slightly ahead in those health bars. Yeah, they can get there a little bit faster there. The burrow has been used. Will the chain bomb spread? No, it does end up avoiding that. They do rotate down to the defensive posture, which I like to have the lead right now, but it's not that big of a lead. Unfortunately, though, we have two keeps that are going to be sieged here soon by the bruiser camps, and that could be a very easy double keep situation. This is bad for rack attack specifically, as this keep is already uh, right. very low. Uh, yeah. Bottom one is getting worked on very quickly here. Yeah, it's gonna bring it down too. Both of them might just straight up lose the keeps here, and that might be okay for Rack Attack, because it might give them, especially if they lose Vala, and Graymane just goes for the throat. Vala taken out. They didn't send somebody back to defend the staff. They're behind in the immortal damage. Both may be going to lose those keeps there, but Rack Attack still with it very close to getting their level 20, trying to get this immortal, trying to find a game winning, uh, a game winning objective. Both keeps just about the fall. Bottom keep fell for OVO. Cocoon does end up going out there. There's the knockup from Anubarak. They're trying to get this immortal down. It's very low. There's the Sinja Ghost. A lot of damage going on. The Zugrug. He does use a seven side strike. Shleto on the back line. Being zoned by Dansk. It's last gets hit with a big ancestral healing here. But the fight's being won by OVO right now. Despite it being five versus four. The oh. kills are coming here. Rhaegar and Kael'thas immediately get cleaned up. The resets are here for Li Ming. And this should be game here for Rack Attack. Jeez, that funnel in just destroyed OVO. Rack Attack only loses their Karazim. The Immortal is ready. It's starting to spawn up into the top. Yes, there are bruisers on the core side for Rack Attack, but similarly, OVO's core went down a lot in its shielding too, so they're not going to waste any time with that too as they're already moving in to make sure that they can uh, finish off those shields and the core and the game. Yeah, I mean, that, that could have been a completely different situation if Vala didn't get picked off beforehand for OVO, as mm -hmm. the fight was close, fought 4 versus 5, but they knew they had to force that fight. The Immortal uh, going through top keep, which was already low, uh, would have been just a game. So what looked like a really scary and silly engage for OVO, that was really their only option. Uh, so that's going to be it. GG, 2-1 victory for Rack Attack. And that means that Rack Attack will move on to face Cloud9, but OVO are not out of this. They go down to the lower bracket. And here are the stats. I'll switch over to talent so you can see it in the, se in the second. We did have a request for that. Um, looking at who they'll be going up against should be Brawls Deep, but I'm not sure how uh, that, how that goes, if they switch sides or if they just face uh, the same side that they're on. I don't here, know. Here are the talents, friends. So you can see them. Work on your own builds. But yeah, that will be it for this first match. Uh, do you know who will be... Are we just going to follow them into Cloud9? Hello, team? I don't. I assume so. Alright. That's the plan. We'll let you know in chat if it's different. So hang tight. Uh, yes, that is the plan. Okay, cool. Hang tight for Rack Attack versus Cloud9. We'll see you guys for that match soon.